Thank you for watching this video that is important information for you to consider prior to calling to schedule a consultation. Now, not everybody, unfortunately, is a candidate for a cosmetic surgery. And there are a number of things that people need to, that you need to realize if you're going to consider calling to schedule a consultation. And hopefully this video will help to inform you about whether you may or may not be a candidate for surgery and whether it may be worth your while to take the time to come in. So the first thing to consider is that I do not operate on smokers. Smoking is one of the worst things that you can do prior to, during, and after surgery. Now, smoking will actually increase your risk of a major healing complication to about 50-50. And so when you think about it, what it means is you take a coin, you flip a coin. If it lands on heads, you get a reasonable result without major complications. If it lands on tails, you have a horrible, horrible outcome um, that you cannot potentially fix. Okay, so what I mean by that is that smoking will constrict blood vessels. And the nicotine and the carbon monoxide that, that's in that, those cigarettes and the cigarette smoke will actually cause the blood vessels to be constricted and that decreases blood flow to areas that need it to heal. What this means then is that let's say if you have a breast lift or a breast reduction, if you don't get enough blood supply to your nipples, your nipples can turn black and fall off and you will not have nipples afterwards. If you have a tummy tuck, and I have seen this before, uh, and not enough blood supply gets to that skin of the tummy tuck, the skin can turn black and it can die, leaving you with a huge crater, a big hole in your tummy. If you have a facelift and you smoke, well, that, if that skin of the face may also die and literally on your cheek you will have exposed fat with no skin on it. It is absolutely horrifying, as horrifying as it sounds. So because of the high risks of smoking, I just don't operate on smokers when I do cosmetic surgery. So the rules are very simple. You do not smoke for one month before and at least one month after surgery. Uh, by stopping smoking, you, you will clear that from your bloodstream and from your system, and you can become a reasonable candidate for surgery. But you have to be completely off cigarettes. No cheating, uh, not even one or two, not a couple puffs. You have to be completely off for at least a month before and a month after. And we do request that if you come in for a consultation, that you are off smoking by the time you come in for that consultation. Um, so very important to realize. This also applies to hookah and marijuana. Uh, both hookah and marijuana can do the same thing as smoking, and so the same rule applies. Uh, and no secondhand smoke. If you've got a family member or if you've got um, you know, a spouse, somebody that smokes inside the house, they have to smoke outside. It's fine if they smoke outside the house and you're inside, that's okay. But even if they smoke in a different room, that smoke will go through the vents. And I have seen at least two cases where secondhand smoke, literally somebody smoking in one room of the house, the patient was in the other room, that, that smoke went through the vents and both patients ended up in the hospital with huge craters in the middle of their tummy after a tummy tuck. They came in to have a cosmetic procedure to flatten their tummy and unfortunately because their spouse or relative did not stop smoking in the house, they ended up with a big hole in their stomach that could never be completely fixed. So this is a big deal. If you're a smoker, you have to quit. I don't operate on smokers, it's too high risk. If you've got family members that smoke, you gotta let them know that they have to smoke outside. Or ideally they can quit too. Now you are not a candidate for cosmic surgery if you have a bleeding or clotting problem. Okay, this is a big deal. See your hematologist um, or your cardiologist to discuss this further. But if you have a bleeding or clotting problem, you are not a candidate for cosmetic surgery and should not make an appointment for a consultation. If you have a history of stents, this also will likely not make you a candidate for surgery. And so talk with your cardiologist to see because some people that are on stents are on um, blood thinners and, and we can't necessarily take you off that without putting you at risk of um, dangerous potential complications. If you have current major or uh, major heart or lung disease, you're not a candidate for cosmetic surgery. Uh, if you are significantly overweight, it's very important for you to realize that uh, plastic surgery is not a weight loss procedure. If you do wanna lose weight, plastic surgery is not a good avenue for that. Best to see a bariatric surgeon or go to a weight loss center. There are a lot of weight loss physicians as well that can help you. Um, but not plastic surgery. So if you're looking at plastic surgery to help you lose weight, not a good idea. Uh, if you have a major psychiatric history, if you've been diagnosed with BDD, schizophrenia, major depression, 
uh, those types of things, you're seeing a psychiatrist, you are not a candidate for cosmetic surgery. Uh, talk with your psychiatrist about it first. Mm -hmm. We do require anybody who is on multiple psychiatric medications to be cleared by a psychiatrist prior to having any type of cosmetic surgery. Also, if you have any active major health problems like cancer, uh, cosmetic surgery is not a good idea for you. Got to he heal from the cancer, got to get through that first. And if you are all healed, then we can definitely consider it. Um, but if you have a current cancer, then it's not a good idea to make a, an appointment for a consultation because you are not a good candidate for cosmetic surgery. Mm. Um, there are also um, uh, medications that can cause you not to be a candidate for a cosmetic surgery. So if you are on medications like blood thinners, uh, major psychiatric medications, multiple cardiac medications, if you're on Accutane, you got to be off for at least six months prior to surgery. So if you're making a consultation, you uh, talk with your dermatologist, get off that Accutane because we do not operate on people within six months of stopping Accutane. Uh, if you are on oxygen, supplemental oxygen, you are not a candidate for cosmetic surgery. If you are currently on chemotherapy medication, you are also not a candidate for cosmetic surgery. Some other things that you need to consider if you're coming in for a consultation is it is best to get off all supplements for two weeks before and two weeks after surgery. Um, some supplements uh, can cause you to have a higher risk of bleeding complications, and we want to make sure that we avoid that. Now, if you are actively losing weight, okay, if you are planning to lose anywhere from 10 pounds or more, you ideally need to be within 5 to 10 pounds of your reasonable goal prior to consultation. So I get a lot of patients who will come in to see me. They say, oh, I want a tummy tuck, but I want to lose 30 pounds first. Well, lose the weight first. Get your weight stable and then come in for the consultation because otherwise the best time to have surgery is when your weight is stable. Okay, And I've had a lot of patients who will come in and say, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. Um, and we usually send them out and say, you got to come back after the weight's loss. Then we can reassess at that time. Well, what about if you're postpartum? Okay, You need to wait six months after birth or after you're finished breastfeeding, especially for breast surgery. Okay, so if you're breastfeeding and you're thinking about a breast implant or you're thinking about a breast lift, then you got to wait six months after you're done breastfeeding prior to considering surgery. Uh, and so keep that in mind if you are scheduling a consultation. We don't want you to come in when you're two months out from breastfeeding because we're going to send you out and have you come back when you're six months out. Um, and your weight ideally should be close to pre-pregnancy weight. Now, understanding that not everybody can get their weight back to where they were prior to having kids, you know, I understand that and I see that all the time. Uh, but ideally, you want to have your weight be stable uh, and at a weight that you feel you are healthy uh, and can maintain. Okay, and so with any of these types of weight issues, you want to be at a healthy, stable weight prior to coming in for your consultation. We get labs on everybody, okay? So everybody who decides to have cosmetic surgery, we want to make sure that they don't have a bleeding issue, that they're not anemic, um, that their heart will tolerate surgery, that they don't have a concurrent urinary tract infection. So we do get labs on everybody. Um, we do get preoperative clearance for anybody over the age of 40. So if you're over 40, we will have you see your physician uh, to get a clearance from that doctor to make sure that it is safe to operate on you. Uh, if you have a history of heart disease, we will have you see your cardiologist or we can refer you to somebody to get cleared. Uh, and so that's something else that you may want to consider having done prior to coming in for the consultation. And once again, if you have multiple psychiatric medications, then we do need to get a psychiatric clearance. So talk with your psychiatrist prior to coming in for consultation to make sure that he or she will clear you for surgery. Now, what about age? People ask, am I too old to have plastic surgery? Well, age is not a black and white issue. As we get older, yes, it does take longer to heal. Recovery may, take, may be a little more difficult. And depending on the surgery, we may then alter the surgery to help make it easier for you to heal. But it isn't a black or white issue. It's really more about your health than your age. And I would actually rather operate on a healthy 70-year-old who's not on medications, who's active, who eats well, uh, and, and is not significantly overweight over a 40-year-old person who's overweight with diabetes, uh, a poor diet, and other medical issues. And so it's more your health than it is your, than your age that is most important here. 
And this is very important. If you are considering a revision surgery, so if you've had breast implants before and you need to have them revised, um, if you've had a breast lift and you want to be relifted, uh, if you have had other types of operations and, we're, and you're seeing me for a second um, opinion, then you want to bring your medical records, your old records, to the consultation. Okay, so for example, if you're thinking about breast implant revision, you say, I think I want to go bigger, I need your implant information to get an idea of how, you know, of what you have so we can hopefully point you in the right direction for size. If you say, I don't like the way my breasts feel um, after having implants, then having that old information will help us to help determine what you have and what we can change uh, to make things better. So if you're thinking about any type of revision surgery, call the old doctor's office, get those records. Those records are your property. The information is your property. And, um, and typically most states will uh, require those doctors to hold the records for at least seven years, sometimes up to 10. So get a copy of those records and bring them with you to the consultation. It will be so unbelievably helpful uh, when you come in for the consultation if you have those with you. Uh, otherwise, we may end up having to have you come back a second time to really go over it together and, and best not to waste your time um, and money and effort uh, to do that. Uh, finally, let's talk a little bit about scars. The vast majority of surgeries that we perform will create scars. And it's really important for you if you're going to consider having surgery to know about scars. Now, scars are permanent, okay? There is no way to, to create an invisible scar or a scar that disappears. They are always permanent. When, when you have a scar, if you're 12 years old, it's still going to be there when you're 95, guaranteed. There is a risk of thickening and widening with all types of scars. So I tell patients that no matter how I do a surgery, there's always a risk that the scar that is created by that surgery can thicken, it can darken, it can become a keloid, uh, it can widen, and I don't have a lot of control over that. I truly don't. Um, really, it comes down to your body, and everybody's body reacts differently to different traumas and different scars. Um, and the best way to determine how your body is going to react to a scar is by, look, by looking at old scars that you've had before. If you've never had a scar before, never had surgery or a major injury, then we don't know. And we just have to keep that in mind if you're gonna consider surgery. Um, well, what about scar revision? Uh, there are treatments to help scars to either revise them or to minimize them. Uh, the, and the steps are written here on the screen. The first thing we always start with are with scar creams. And I start by recommending a silicone-based scar cream. We sell them here in our office uh, that you can purchase. If the creams aren't quite doing it, then the next step are lasers. And, and we have multiple lasers that we can use to help uh, improve scar appearance, uh, hopefully decrease some of the redness and the thickening, thickness of scars. Following that are steroid injections. And so when scars start to get quite thick, then the next step would be to inject them with steroids that can help to thin those scars out. But steroids do have potential side effects of thinning of the surrounding skin, and that's why we don't use it in everybody. And then we can also operate. You know, surgery can be used to remove scars, basically to start over again. And this scar revision surgery we can use to cut out thick scars, cut out wide scars, and start over. Now you gotta keep in mind, however, though, that by starting over again, the same thing can happen. If your body is just prone to creating a thick or a wide scar, even if we cut it out and start over again, there's no guarantee that it's not gonna do that again. That's the problem. Now we can try different things with silicone sheeting over the creams. Uh, we can in inject more steroids. But in the end, I guess the lesson of the whole scar thing is that it comes down to your body. I don't have control over how your body creates scars. We can do what we can to try to influence it, but nothing is 100%, unfortunately. Doesn't mean we can't try, but nothing is 100%. Well, I hope that this has been helpful for you. Uh, important information prior to your consultation. So prior to calling, I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you are a smoker, you got to stop smoking. If, if you've got other medical issues, you may or may not be a candidate for surgery. So take a peek and see if, if those have applied to you, then I really want you to know that before calling, before paying for a consultation so that you know whether it may be worthwhile for you. Thank you so much for watching.